I am in such a tea mood at the moment. Like, I have this new tea, and this is a three mint tea by Pucker, and it is my favorite tea ever. Also, do you like my mug? I am obsessed with this mug. You will probably see me and this mug in every single video because it is just so beautiful. I love Emma Bridgewater mugs. They are my favorite mugs of all time. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to my channel. I'm not in focus. Okay, I think I am in focus. I think Canon just doesn't like me very much. I'm so excited to be filming in my new bedroom today. We are set on my new bed. I have a little art piece here that you can't see very well, but it is like, it's an, a picture of the moon. It's a painting of the moon. And I have like some candles and stuff. So this room isn't fully done yet. It will be done soon, but it's not quite ready yet, which is why we're kind of sat here. I know you guys can't see too much, but I'm still really excited to be filming in this room. And in order to kind of like celebrate you guys, I thought we'd sit down today and do a cozy and chatty little Q&A. I realise that a lot of my videos are vlog style videos where you guys get to see the day to day life, but I don't really answer any of your questions. And I get very similar, if not the same questions, either in my DMs, on Instagram, comments on YouTube, or comments on my Instagram like pictures, generally asking the same thing. So I thought today, I'd give you guys the chance to ask me questions and I'm just gonna sit down and answer them. So I'm very excited to do that. I asked you guys over on Instagram to send me through a load of questions and you guys have been so sweet and I'm just gonna sit down and answer them all now. So I hope you're ready. Grab yourself a hot drink. I am ready with my uh, three mint tea and we'll get started. So before we go straight on to the questions, I thought we could do the basics first because these are the questions I get asked so many times that you guys clearly wanna know. And you know, who would I be not to share the basics about me? So my full name is Shannon, but you can call me Shan. My birthday is the 26th of September, 1997, which does make me a 90s baby. And I highly associate with being a 90s baby. Because I was born September 26th, that makes my air sign a Libra and I love being a Libra. I don't know much about astrology. I don't actually know what it means, but I love being a Libra. I think it's just one of those things where I've always identified as being a Libra. So I'm like, yes, I am a Libra. Though I have absolutely no idea what Libra traits are. <laughs> I am a massive homebody. I will always take staying in over going on a night out. I find such peace and joy in being at home. I find that home is my personal space. It is my safety and I just love being here versus going out. I find that my perfect ideal night in is the coziness with like cozy candles, with having a good movie or one of my favorite books and having like a little glass of wine. Like that is my ultimate night in. And I just feel like nothing can beat that. Now don't get me wrong, I do love seeing my friends and I love being with my friends and I do go out to see them, but I am much more of a of a little introvert that I am an extrovert. I so love just my own cozy space. I have literally in the last week since I am posting this finished my master's degree. So a lot of people are asking me what do I do? What have I been doing? And I have been studying for the last years. Honestly, it's been a very, very long time because when I started my legal master's degree, which is the degree you do after you've done your undergraduate, which is your third degree, most people do at university. I did my undergraduate, had a year off and then started my master's. And unfortunately during that time, COVID really bled. That's when all the lines were frazzled. My university was moved to being online. Some of the classes were simply canceled and it was a really, really big mess. So it took quite a long time for me to actually start and then finish my master's. I think it's taken me three years. The course itself is two years because I did it part-time, but it took me like three and maybe even three and a bit years to actually finish it. But I have now finished and I am leaving with a master's degree in law at the level of accommodation. And for those of you that don't know, when you do a postgrad degree, a master's degree, unlike a undergrad degree where you get a first, a second, a two one or a two two, it goes distinction, commendation, pass. And I got a commendation, which is basically equivalent to a two one. I'm very proud of myself. I worked very, very hard. Yes, it would have been nice to get a distinction. But I'm very happy with my commendation. So literally in the last week, I got my legal master's degree. Currently in terms of work, I am helping a property development company. 
which is so cool. I run their social media. I'm helping take photos and videos and promote and put their Airbnb business up on social media to get it advertised for them and I love doing it. I also of course make my own social media content like this, like talking to you guys which I love. I'm just having a break from law at the moment. A lot of people are asking me when I'm getting a training contract, when am I going to law, am I a lawyer now? No I'm not a lawyer now but I will be going back into law soon and at some point I am just simply having a break from law because I have been so exhausted. My last exam was an eight hour exam. So to have that done and behind me is a huge relief and I'm just having some time to do some things that I love. I'm allowing my body the grace of rest at the moment. I like to think of it as I'm literally resting, chilling, having the time to just breathe. I'm finding things that I love. I'm learning French. I am getting into watercolour and oil pastel paintings. I'm reading as much as I possibly can and I'm currently also redoing my room. So I am keeping busy. I am just having a little bit of time off to focus on myself and my mental health and trying to figure out what I enjoy and then I'm going to go straight back into law. So that is what I'm doing at the moment. I am honestly wholeheartedly loving having a break. <laughs> And for those of you that don't know, although I'm sure many of you do already know, I am from England. I was born in England. I am from Surrey, which is the southeast. And I'm sure many of you have realized I'm English from the fact that my accent is the way it is. But for those of you that don't know, I am English. So we are just gonna go straight into the questions now. Let's go. So question number one is such a sweet question. They've said, not a question, but I hope you're doing well. Firstly, thank you for asking that. That is so sweet. Touch my heart a little bit. I am doing really well. Yes, thank you for asking. I was not doing so well a couple of weeks ago. I was just full of anxiety, very anxious for my university results and living in a bubble of honestly sheer fear. I don't know how to explain it other than I was just terrified to get my results. I was feeling very like lost. I kind of convinced myself I wouldn't pass and I was really struggling. But now that I have my results and I'm feeling a lot better about it, I am in such a good place. I'm really enjoying my life, my quiet little life. Not that I do much. <laughs> I don't feel like I do much, but I am really enjoying making my YouTube videos. I'm really enjoying having the time off from law, no longer having to study, baking and painting and learning all the things that I love, like reading and social media. I'm really enjoying and I'm focusing a lot on my mental health. I am journaling and trying to get out more. So I am literally spending the time at the moment really just focusing on what makes me happy, what makes me okay. So yes, I am really well at the moment. Thank you so much for asking. Question two is what's your type? I'm assuming in men. Okay, firstly, one of the questions I have been asked on repeat is am I single? Yes, I am single. I have been single for three years. Three years, I think. Is it three years? Must be, must be three years. I've been single for three years. Sorry, I don't know what they it is anymore. Um, and my type is someone that is kind and sweet and protective. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm not like overly fussy, but I do want to say that I'm not looking to date anyone at the moment. I'm not, I'm not dating anyone. I'm not interested in dating anyone. Just in the sense that I'm on my own little path. I am alone. I've been alone for a while and I am enjoying it. I am enjoying being quite selfish at the moment. Not selfish as in like horribleness, but selfish as in I don't have to discuss with someone what I want to eat. I don't have to decide with someone what we do that day. I don't have to compromise on literally anything. I can do whatever I want and I'm using that time in my mid twenties to really discover who I am and be really selfish about it and think, you know, I want to do this, so I'm going to go do this. And there is no one to talk about it with. I'm just enjoying that time. And then when the time is right and I'm ready to settle, I will start dating again. But at the moment, I'm not dating anyone. I'm not seeing anyone. And I'm just very, very content with it. Question three is, if money wasn't an issue, what would your ideal vacation be? Okay, I want to travel. This year for me is going to be the year of travel. I haven't been traveling in a very long time. I haven't actually gone anywhere in a very long time. I think the last place I traveled to abroad was Cyprus, which would have been 2020. No, ignore that, 2019, because it was before COVID. I went with my family and I haven't been anywhere since, but I really want to go see Athens. I have two very, very good friends that now live there, so I want to go see them. I also very desperately want to go to Rome. Rome is so beautiful. I'm such a history nerd, for those of you that don't know. I love literally all history specifically medieval history. I love the Renaissance era. 
and I love art. So somewhere like Rome, where it had literally everything, I would just love to see. Rome, going and getting an Airbnb for like a week, and then going to the Colosseum, seeing the Trevi Fountain, you know, having authentic Italian food, wearing beautiful sundresses, that is the dream. That is the goal this year. That is what I wanna do. Question number four is a very simple question. Do you like the Big Bang Theory? Honestly, I've never watched it. I have never watched the Big Bang Theory. I've never, it's not been something that I've overly been interested in. It's not something that I've gone, oh, I really wanna watch that. So I've not invested in it. I'm really sorry. Let me know if I should watch it. If you think it's really good and I should watch it, I'll watch it for you. Another tea break, I'm very sorry. My throat gets really dry when I talk a lot. Fun fact for you. Very boring fact for you. Someone asks, what is my favorite season? My favorite season of all time, hands down, is autumn. I am such an autumn girly, namely because, because I was born in September, at the end of September, I'm obviously an autumn baby. I was born in autumn. I've always had my birthdays and birthday parties in autumn and I've just loved it. Halloween is my favorite night of the whole year. I'm such a Halloweeny girl. Again, don't really know why. I just love Halloween. I love all the cozy films. Hocus Pocus is one of my all time favorite films. Ever. It just reminds me of childhood. I love Halloween like autumn snacks. I love pumpkin flavored everything. And just the general vibe of autumn is my favorite. Not that I ever leave the house, but I love that change of season from summer where it's stiflingly hot to autumn where it's cooler with crunchy leaves. We can watch Gilmore Girls, drink cups of tea, coffee, book dates. Oh, I just, pumpkin carving, cooking and baking, all of it. Honestly as well, like Zoella vlogs. Zoella vlogs and like baking are, the most autumnal activity I can think of. <laughs> I am an autumn girly through and through. What's my dream date? My dream date is going to the bookshop. Going, we go to the bookshop together. Okay, hear me out. We go to the bookshop together. We go to the fantasy section. We close our eyes. We scan the books with our hands and we pick one. We take that book, we buy it. We have, if it's not, make sure it's the first of a series, obviously. We're not We're not gonna pick a, pick a book that's like eight books in. Um, but whatever that series is, we'll make sure that we have the first one. We pay for it. We go to the coffee shop. We find a little coffee shop and we read together with a little cupcake, a little pastry and a coffee or a tea. And we sit and we read together. That is, that is the date, the date to go on. What? Sorry, this made me giggle. What's one question you're bored of answering? Mm, how old am I? A lot of people don't believe that I'm 26 years old. Don't know why. Some people think I'm older. I've had someone ask me if I'm 31. Someone has asked me if I'm 19. Just seems to be the question that people don't seem to believe, but I am 26 years old. This is a good question. I like this question. This is, have you watched Doctor Who? If yes, who's your favorite doctor? I grew up on Doctor Who. I was such a huge fan of Doctor Who. Like words do not describe how much I love Doctor Who. And I don't know if I'm gonna upset anyone with this. So I'm really sorry if I do upset you. Sorry, my hair is annoying me. Bear with, bear with while I sort my hair out. I am a David Tennant girly. I grew up with David Tennant. Now don't get me wrong. I love Matt Smith. I love Peter Capaldi, but, and Jodie Whittaker, of course, and Christopher Eccleston. I love them all, but I was brought up with Matt Smith and I love him so much. He is just the doctor to me. Okay, this is an interesting question. Someone has asked or said, You've mentioned that you have had a chronic illness in the past. Do, do you mind discussing with us what it is? Fair enough. Um, I like that question. I always try and talk about my health and be open with it with you guys. Although I've realized I haven't spoken about it in a very, very long time. Yes, I have chronic health. So basically what I have are, I have a couple of conditions. The first condition I have is called spondylosis thesis. And in short, what that means is right at the bottom of my vertebrae, the second vertebrae from the bottom, the two pars, the two pars, the two vertebrae either side, I'm making this very complex, they have fractures in them. And then the disc in the middle has disintegrated. So from that, that's obviously having an effect on my nerves. It makes my spine slant and it can cause me quite a lot of pain and back issues. And it's a management that I deal with via stretches in the gym, pain medication, also meditation just to help my anxiety with it. And it is going to be a lifelong condition. There isn't anything I can do to change it unless I have a major operation, but I don't want to have a major operation if I don't have to. So at the moment I'm not even considering it, but it might be something I have eventually, but right now 
it's just something I manage day by day. And then also I have a chronic illness called chronic fatigue syndrome, also known as CFS or ME, which is myalgic encephalomitis. And what this is, in short, it's a chronic illness that most people haven't heard of, but it is a chronic illness where the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, is damaged, so the body stops producing the same levels of energy as everyone else. You imagine a battery and it's at like 50% because it hasn't been fully charged, and then once you've used it, it's completely gone and you're no longer able to use it. That is what it's like having this illness. My body just never fully charges properly. Some people with the condition fully recover, most people do not. It is a lifelong condition. There is also a difference between chronic fatigue syndrome and myalgic encephalomitis, which many people don't know. Myalgic encephalomitis means that it also has inflammation on the brain. You have a chronic infection in the body, you have something wrong with the body, and you have a you have the inflammation with it, whereas that's what myalgic encephalomitis means, is inflammation on the brain. Chronic fatigue syndrome has the infection, has the issue with mitochondria, but there isn't the inflammation. So my mother had myalgic encephalomitis, whereas I've had chronic fatigue syndrome because there hasn't been inflammation. I hope that helps. If you are interested in knowing more, I am more than happy to discuss it. It isn't something I am quiet about. I don't ever talk about it for whatever reason, but it does affect me day to day. It is a pain in the bum. It is something that I have to live with. It is part of who I, who I am. I got diagnosed with my spinal condition when I was 19. I was then diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome not too long after. I unfortunately got chronic fatigue syndrome from trying to help my spine. Again, a very long story. I am more than happy to share. Please do let me know in the comments if you would like that story because it is a very long story. <laughs> but yeah. So I do have health conditions and I do have to look after myself and pace myself and make sure I don't overdo it, which I do all the time. Another tea break. <laughs> what is your career plan? Sorry, let me start again. That didn't make any sense. What is your plan career-wise now you have mastered? I, I cannot speak. Oh my God. Okay, bear with me. I'm really sorry. What is your plan career-wise now you have completed your master's degree? Like I said, I'm going to have a rest and chill out and just enjoy the time off and then I'm going straight back into law. I will probably go into real estate because I love real estate. I really like working it and from there I will basically be a trainee sister. So I will continue my legal journey as well as doing my social media because I love my social media. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Okay, I think, I think that's quite a good one to leave off, leave off on. Where do I see myself in 10 years? I'm 26 now. If you had told 16 year old Shannon that she would still be living at home, you know, currently on a break from uni, not working in a pub, she wouldn't believe you. I thought at 16, I would be moved out living with a boyfriend. I would be working in a pub or some kind of, you know, just easy job and would just be like vibing. Whereas now I am obviously just finished my master's degree. I am still living at home and I am single, which is, you know, 16 year old me would have been like, what is going on? <laughs> what have you done? Where do I see myself in 10 years? I see myself continuing with social media, loving social media to the fullest, continuing doing videos and vlogs, hopefully having it as a job. I, I would love to do YouTube and social media as my job. That is my absolute like dream job. That's what I wanna do. But also working in law, either having my own firm and working for myself or working for a real estate. One day becoming some kind of partner in law, that would be amazing, like a partner in a firm. Or having my own firm and having my own country house, that is a dream of mine, is to have a house in the country, a little cottage with three little black cats, Resand, Cassian and Asriel, if you know, you know. <laughs> and maybe a little dog or two having like wildflowers everywhere, sunflowers everywhere, growing my own vegetables, having chickens. That is where I want to be. Do I think I'll achieve that in 10 years? No, I might, but I probably won't. Is that like just my overall life goal? Yes, that is what I want eventually at some point. I feel like there's such a pressure on everyone in this life, at this time in life, to have everything figured out, have brought a home, be married, have children, do everything, and yet I'm single at 26 and still living at home. And I've just finished my master's degree, which is huge. A lot of people, when they start their master's degree, by the time they finish, they're not 26, they're quite a bit younger, but I still manage to do it. I feel like there is no time limit on what we do as long as we do it. It doesn't matter if you do it a bit later than everyone else. What matters is that you do it. So I'm not too worried. I just want to be happy. If I could see 
myself in 10 years time as 36 year old me and I was happy. I'm fine with that. I'm happy with that. All right, my loves, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I really enjoyed sitting down, chatting with you, and I'm so excited to eventually show you my new bedroom. I think it's so super cute in here. It makes me just the happiest. If you have any more questions for me, please do leave them down below. I would be more than happy to answer them for you. Oh, mum's come into the room, hello. I am filming. Mum and I are looking at going to a country club for a little day out because I think I mentioned I do stretches um, for my spine and they have this really lovely gym with a specialist physio. So mum was just organising that. <laughs> I'm going to have to leave that in. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions for me, do leave them down below. I would be more than happy to answer them for you. Don't forget to follow my Instagram. Thank you very much for being here. I love you very much. Happy Sunday. Bye.